let's talk about prophylaxis, uh, what it is and uh, who needs it. Um, and before we talk about prophylaxis, I think it's important that we go a step before that and talk about prevention of all cause lower respiratory tract infection, because as we say, this is the deadliest um, childhood illness. Um, and the things that have evidence for uh, reducing and preventing lower respiratory tract infections from whatever cause um, are adequate nutrition, uh, breastfeeding, um, appropriate immunizations, um, zinc supplementation, a reduction of indoor pollution, um, especially in areas where biomass is used as fuel. Um, um, when you think about um, HIV-related uh, lower respiratory tract infection, then um, you would think about ART, and of course, um, in pneumocystis pneumonia, then you would be talking about uh, prophylaxis with cotrimoxazole. Uh, when we talk about prophylaxis in pneumocystis pneumonia, we have to think about it as either primary or secondary. Now, primary is the prophylaxis that is indicated for patients at risk before their very first um, infection. And the two ways of doing that is, of course, um, having immune reconstitution using um, heart and uh, prophylaxis for specific categories of HIV-infected patients. Um, and the idea is um, you give this to the patients to prevent them from getting their first ever pneumocystis pneumonia. Now, we also have secondary prophylaxis, and this means what you do to patients after they've gotten their first infection. So this is indicated after the first infection um, uh, with um, pneumocystis um, gyroveshi leading to pneumocystis pneumonia. And um, in most cases, this will be continued for life um, or sometimes until immune reconstitution in some um, special cases. Now, um, cotrimoxazole uh, reduces mortality in HIV-infected children of all ages and all CD4 counts as compared to placebo. And we have to remember that especially for the infants less than one year, um, that CD4 count is not a good surrogate of who gets um, uh, pneumocystis pneumonia. Um, the other thing is that it confers protection against other bacterial infections and malaria in areas of um, high malaria endemicity. Now, the dose for prophylaxis is uh, 5 to 10 milligrams per kg per day based on the trimethoprim component. Um, and there are uh, various um, charts, um, do, uh, weight uh, based charts um, giving you um, weight bands and the appropriate dose of cotrimoxazole for that weight band. If for some reason a patient cannot be able to take um, the uh, cotrimoxazole, then alternative agents are dapsone, uh, tobacone, or um, uh, aerosolized pentamidine. Uh, what is the evidence for prophylaxis? Um, this is a landmark study that was carried out in Zambia in 2003-2004. Um, where they looked at um, about 541 children and they were randomized to either receive uh, septin prophylaxis or placebo. And they were followed up for, um, the median time of follow-up of this study was about 19 months. Um, and um, the trial had to be um, stopped prematurely because um, it was very obvious that um, cotrimoxazole was conferring uh, protection against mortality. Um, so in the category of children who received cotrimoxazole, um, the mortality was about 28% after 19 months, uh, while in the placebo group, about 42% of the patients had died by um, 19 months. Um, of note in these patients is that they were older, um, so the median age was about 4.4 years. Um, and also that um, most of them had severe immunosuppression. So only about 16% um, um, of them had CD4% of above 20%. So these were um, a little older in that they were not infants, they were about four years, and that they were severely immunosuppressed uh, children. And you can clearly see that um, um, use of cotrimoxazole for prophylaxis, um, not, not just for pneumocystis pneumonia, but for 
other OIs was associated with improved survival in the, um, uh, in the patients who received cotrimoxazole as opposed to the ones who received uh, placebo. Now, the World Health Organization has put out guidelines for the use of uh, cotrimoxazole and uh, we will quickly go through what the guidelines say. Um, so, all HIV infected or HIV exposed infants who are less than one year of age, regardless of their symptoms or their CD4 percentage, should be put on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis. Now, if you're above a year of age, um, then um, um, cotrimoxazole is indicated for um, patients who have a CD4 percent that's below 25 percent or who are in the World Health Organization AIDS category stages 2, 3 or 4. Now if you start before your five years um, then you should continue until you are five years of age and then you can be at least until you're five years of age and then you can be reassessed. Uh, for the children who are above five years, then the adult um, categories of cotrimoxazole prophylaxis are used, and this is um, uh, World Health Organization stages 2 to 4, or a CD4 count of less than 350. In countries with high burdens of mortality or morbidity due to um, infectious diseases, um, due to bacteria or malaria, then there's a caveat that um, you can offer septrin to all of these children who have HIV uh, irrespective of their clinical staging, irrespective of their CD4 count, if they are living in areas where um, there is high burden of uh, mortality or morbidity due to malaria or due to the bacterial infection. Um, and in most countries, this is actually what has been adopted, that um, all children who have um, HIV, irrespective of their CD4 count, irrespective of their uh, World Health, uh, Health Organization staging, will be put on septrin for prophylaxis. How about in the HIV non-infected patients? Uh, remember, pneumocystis pneumonia is not just a disease of the HIV infected, but also of the non-infected who have um, immunosuppression from various causes. Um, now, if you have hematological malignancies, if you have had bone marrow or solid organ transplants, if you've had inflammatory disorders um, and you have received corticosteroids um, for about a month, then these children need to be put on prophylaxis. Um, according to the study that was done in Kenya, um, even if malnutrition is a known risk factor for pneumocystis pneumonia, at least for now we do not have evidence for putting children who have malnutrition on um, septrin prophylaxis. Um, so to break it down further, um, in the non-HIV infected patients, if you have leukemia, either acute lymphocytic or acute myeloid, if you have lymphoma, if you've been uh, treated with steroids for more than a month for patients who have brain tumors, if you have solid tumors that have been treated with high intensity um, chemotherapy with vincristine, actinomycin, um, or cyclophosphamide, if you've had a bone marrow transplant or you've had prolonged neutropenia or lymphopenia, then you may qualify for um, pneumocystis, pneumonia, prophylaxis, um, of course in consultation with experts. Now what are the challenges of prophylaxis with cotrimoxazole? So first it's uh, problems of adherence. Um, most of the times these are um, children who are ill from um, whatever illness, be it HIV, be it their cancer, be it the primary immunodeficiencies and are probably on multiple other um, medications. So adherence has been poor in um, several reported studies and um, ranging between 18 to 40 percent um, in the HIV exposed infants who had been prescribed for prophylaxis um, in South Africa. Um, the other big problem with um, um, cotrimoxazole prophylaxis is of course antimicrobial resistance when you've been on a drug for a long time. Um, and this is especially important in lower and middle income countries because septrin is still a first line for community acquired pneumonia. And so there is um, the whole issue of putting loads of patients on septrin prophylaxis and then if they get um, community acquired pneumonia from whatever other cause, 
then still your first line drug being septrin. Um, the other one is side effects. Um, thankfully in children you do not have, uh, fortunately we do not have as many adverse effects um, in children as compared to adults. Um, and in one series uh, over three years, um, about 28% of the patients develop rash. This is as opposed to adults where rash is reported in up to 80% of them, um, neutropenia in about 10%, um, and anemia in about 2% of those patients who had been followed up for three years. But as we prescribe uh, cotrimoxazole, we need to be aware of these challenges and these other um, thoughts need to be crossing our mind. Uh, will this patient take this septrin, um, what's the risk of resistance overall and what side effects might this patient have and what should I be looking out for. If for some reason, especially for hypersensitivity reasons, you're not able to use the um, cotrimoxazole, then your age, their alternative agents are Dapson at 2 milligrams per kg per day um, orally uh, or you can give pentamidine using an inhaler um, or IV pentamidine can also be given at um, two to four weeks intervals at the doses given there.